Om Gyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Shakshur Miritam Minatas Meshti Gurave Nama Gurave Gorachandraya Radhikaye Tadaraye Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Reading from Vedanta Sutra Last time we spoke how Madhavacharya uh, described this gradation of uh, beings in the universe he believes that um, the lower grade of consciousness, high, middle class of consciousness, higher class of consciousness, and also in the spiritual world, there's also gradation of souls in the spiritual world. So in this material world, Brahma is considered to be the highest creature, and uh, then below him are the gods, and then uh, demigods or Gandharva and... Uh, uh, then uh, the um, um, human beings eventually, the Asura, and so on. So he was saying that um, meditation as a sadhana is uh, prescribed in Vedanta Sutra, and um, it is on the different attributes or qualities of God. So God has unlimited qualities. It is not possible in a single meditation to meditate on all the attributes of God. For a human being, it is impossible. He doesn't have the uh, ability, capacity, qualification. This is called adhikar. He doesn't have the adhikar to meditate on all the qualities of God. But Brahma, he can. This is what Marvacharya is saying, because Brahma, uh, he's adhiguru. He's Adi Guru because he's the first person in the universe, he's the creator of the universe, the highest being in the universe, Tene Brahma Aridaya Adi Kabaye. He was instructed, uh, the Adi Kavi, he's the original Kavi, the original poet, he was Tene Brahma Arida in the heart of Brahma, then was revealed the four Vedas, he has four mouths and each mouth is uttering one Veda. And he also have all knowledge, all the uh, alphabet, the letters of the alphabet comes from different mouth also, uh, and uh, music and all kinds of knowledge comes from him. He's also Adi Guru because he's the head of our Sampradaya, of Madhva Sampradaya. Uh, this is called the uh, um, uh, Brahma Madhva Sampradaya, but uh, Gauriya also, Brahma Madhva Gauriya. Uh, Vaishnava Sampradaya, this is our line. The Adi Guru, the first Guru, is Brahma. And he's certainly not an ordinary human being. Every day, every Kalpa, that is like 1,8,432,000,000 uh, uh, years for one day and a night also, same. No, 4,000,000, four, four, four billion, yes, 8,000,000 eight, eight billions for day and night. And uh, he sees different avatars of Vishnu, Barahadev comes from his nose, and Nishingadev, he comes from a pillar, and then he sees also the activities of Ramachandra and the activities of Krishna, he becomes even bewildered by Krishna, but this is a Leela, uh, Brahma is not really bewildered like we are bewildered, he's playing in the Leela of Krishna, and he's offering prayers, so many prayers in the Srimad Bhagavatam, so many prayers he's offering. So he's capable of meditating on unlimited qualities of Vishnu. We cannot. And gods below him, they're also very fortunate. They are called Sura. Sura, that means devotees. And the Asura, they are not devotees, they're against Vishnu. But they all, the gods are Vaishnava. And, and they have among them uh, Vishnu, who took three strides. Uh, he, Upendra, the little brother of Indra. Indra has a brother, he has Bamaradev. And so they, they worship him. And so uh, many times we say we don't want to go to uh, Indra Loka, we don't want to have this kind of destination. Because, um, first of all, we go to a planet of Indra according to the time limits that is allowed to us, according to our good karma, and then we come back to Martya Loka. And uh, when we enjoy, we forget also 
that the Supreme Lord is there. Yes, the God that can worship Vishnu, but um, usually they worship Vishnu when they are in distress, when they are overburdened by the demons that always want to invade their planets. They go to Brahma to pray and Brahma takes them to uh, Vishnu's abode. Uh, one time Brahma and the gods went on this um, planet where uh, Vishnu lives. There's an ocean of milk and, and, and an island. It's called Shwetadweep. And then um, they start meditating. Brahma was meditating. Uh, uh, and they heard a voice. They didn't see Vishnu. They heard a voice and he said, I will come as Krishna. And all of you gods will come also. Accompany me. So they didn't like disappear from heaven to come down to earth, but their manifestation came. So they are not ordinary uh, beings, they are not like human beings. They are to be uh, honored, because this is Marva saying, they have to be honored. One time also in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said that Vishnu came, he appeared in front of the gods, but he was so effulgent that they couldn't see every, anything. They didn't know uh, what was land, what was the sky, and they were blinded by this big light because Vishnu is so effulgent. But they can see Vishnu. Uh, we cannot. We see Murti of Vishnu. And so therefore, the gods, it is says in Vedanta Sutra, first chapter, we talked about, they, they meditate on the light. The light of Brahman, which is the light of Vishnu. Uh, and we are not entitled to this kind of meditation. So, Śrīla Madhvācārya is describing how there is a gradation of qualification uh, in the universe, in the material universe, and we should show respect to the gods and to Brahmā specifically. We should never uh, disrespect them, thinking that they are ordinary beings. Uh, we should have great respect that they are Vaishnavas, and they are more advanced than we are, and they can help us to progress. So, um, and even if Brahma is not really worshipped, uh, he has no temple outside of Pushkar. This is the only place where there is a temple of Brahma, because he was cursed not to have any place of worship. Even if it is not worshipped like Shiva and Vishnu is worshipped, it doesn't mean that he is insignificant. Actually, Brahma, as the creator, he is the god of all the different religion that we find, monotheistic religion, when they speak about Creator, the God, the Creator, be it in Christianity or Judaism or Islam, actually it is Brahma. They're worshipping Brahma, Hiranyagarbha Brahma, but they don't know. Sometimes they may worship Vishnu if uh, their worship is more in Sattva Gun and they are not willing to get any kind of benediction from Him. They may worship uh, Vishnu and they may worship Shiva, uh, still not knowing. Uh, when he is uh, described in his ferocious aspect of destruction. But most of the time it is Lord Brahma. Uh, so Brahma is actually uh, uh, one aspect of this Trimurti. Uh, uh, and uh, that is God creates, God maintains, God destroys. And um, he is a very important personality. It says also in Vedanta Sutra that at the end of his life, Brahma and everybody that lives on this planet are liberated. Where do they go? We'll see. But, um, technically speaking, our Brahma, he's about 50 years old. And uh, he's a very advanced devotee. Like Madhyam Uttama. Because he has seen Krishna, he has been with different avatar, so he's our guru, um, original guru. So, uh, we have great respect for Brahma. He also uh, wrote or sang the Brahma Samhita uh, uh, in the worship of Govinda. Govinda, Madhi Purusham, Tamaham, Bhajami. I worship this primeval God, Govinda. He knows the Tattva Siddhanta. And Sri Madhvacharya and the Brahma Madhva Sampradaya, he was also a worshipper of Krishna. So therefore, without being totally in the line of Madhva Sampradaya, Madhva Acharya, and it's not like we imbibe all of his teachings. Some of his teachings is a little different for us. 
uh, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he took a little bit from all the different uh, Acharya. Uh, but certainly he took from Marvacharya the defeat of his way of defeating Mayavad philosophy, Shankaracharya's philosophy, and the worship of Krishna exclusively. Then from Nimbaditya or Nimbarka Acharya, he took, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took this Dweta Dweta, Achintya Beda Beda, and the worship of Krishna with the gopis. And Raga, uh, that is uh, Shuddha Dweti, in the Shuddha Dweti line, which is uh, Vishnu Swami or Balabhacharya, he took this Raga Marga, Pushti Marga, the, the way that we do spontaneous attraction. And also uh, Radha Krishna worship, um, that is also uh, in Nim Nimbaditya, yes. Uh, Shuddha Dweti, um, Vishnu Swami line, um, it's more like infant Krishna. And then uh, from Ramanuja Acharya, he took uh, the worship of Sri Lakshmi Devi, because the feminine aspect of God is also very important. So Parashakti, Vishnu Shakti. Uh, we always say Radha Krishna, Lakshmi Narayan, Sita Ram. Uh, this is the Shakti, which is non-different from Vishnu. Uh, uh, Parashakti, uh, Swarupa Shakti. And uh, the other thing is the um, service to the Vaishnava. So he took a little bit from all uh, different Sampradaya to have this um, Gorya Vedanta line. But we uh, have a lot of things that we took from Sripad Marvacharya, Srila Jiva Goswami in his Sandarbha, he describes how we are indebted to Marvacharya. Also Ramanujacharya, uh, of course. So there's a gradation. Uh, and human beings are not entitled to meditate on all these different qualities. We can just uh, sometimes meditate on this quality, sometimes meditate on that quality, but not all of them at the same time. And Sripad uh, Marvacharya is saying that three qualities of Brahman are most important for human beings, Sat, Chit, and Ananda. We've seen, and actually this is like a common saying, Sat, Chit, Ananda, describing Brahma, he's eternal, he's real and eternal, uh, because reality is eternal. There is no reality if it is temporary. So Sat means eternal and real, uh, Satyam. And cheat means the consciousness, the knowledge, the consciousness. So, uh, uh, Brahman is all consciousness, all encompassing consciousness, all uh, uh, universal consciousness. There's different level of consciousness. Then, Anandam, this is a very important aspect of uh, Krishna. Krishna uh, is Anandam. Uh, Satchitananda Vigraha, Brahma Samhita start like this. Huh? That uh, Vishnu, Krishna, he is Satchitananda Vigraha, the embodiment of Satchitananda. And then the last quality or, or feature of Brahman is called Atma, the living entity. Uh, we are called Atma, but Vishnu is Paramatma, he is the great uh, soul. Uh, the soul that is within all the different souls accompanying him. The Christian call him the Great Spirit, the Holy Spirit, but actually this is the soul, Paramatma, the uh, in uh, Antaryamin inside. So this is just to clarify the idea of meditation. Everybody is entitled to meditate, but human beings cannot meditate on more than three aspects or four aspects of God at the same time. And Krishna embodied the Atma of all of everyone. And Satchitananda, he embodies, so if we meditate on Krishna and his pastimes, then it is full meditation. And then Sri Madhvacharya is saying, it doesn't mean that because you meditate on lesser qualities that you don't go to the same destination. Everybody is going to the same destination. Everybody will get moksha, mukti, which is to associate with the Lord, not to merge into impersonal light, but to associate with the Lord. So everybody will get mukti, but according to his adhikar. And also when you get liberated, when you go to Vaikuntha, 
Uh, because Marvacha is not speaking about Krishna Loka or Goloka Vrindavan, he's speaking of Vaikuntha. When you go to Vaikuntha, there's also a gradation. And he's saying later on, there's no jealousy of this. Someone is higher than me, I'm not jealous of him. No envy, no jealousy, because uh, everything is God centered. Everybody is intoxicated with God, and so we have more advanced souls that we also. Uh, respecting and they are very kind to us. And if we take our example, uh, in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, most of the followers of Mahaprabhu, they are meant to go to this uh, uh, Madhurya Rasa and Manjari Bhava. And so we have Rupa Goswami, uh, who is Rupa Manjari. Uh, and all the different Goswami of Vrindavan, they have their Manjari names and also our Gurudev, uh, Srila Prabhupada and Gurudev, they all manjari, and they are always superior to us. It's not like we are equal in communism and everybody can do whatever they want. No, we are under the uh, guidance of uh, uh, Rupa Manjari and our uh, Gurudev in the form of manjari and so on, under Lalita Devi, like this. And this brings us more happiness than just... Uh, everybody being equal, hippie like, they do what they want, no. Uh, so Marvacharya is speaking like this, that there are gradation even in the spiritual world, but we are not envious of this. Just like in the material world, you are not envious of your Gurudev. Your Gurudev is much more advanced than you are, and you are not trying to compete with him or trying to take his position. Uh, a good disciple is not thinking like this. He's thinking always that my spiritual master is so much more advanced than I am, than I will ever be, but he's so merciful also. He's giving me the opportunity to engage uh, me in his service. So this is the spirit of, of practice, of sadhana. This is what it is described. This uh, in accordance with Marvacharya, what he was saying. And next time we'll carry on with... Uh, uh, more sutra from the third part of the third chapter of Vedanta Sutra. Thank you so much. Bancha kalpa tarugacha kripa sindhu vyayavacha patitaram pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha.